All right, all right, all right. Here we go. Let's get started here. Making sure that I switch which device I'm on. All right, in your Google Chrome browser, you're going to type in 192.168.1.1. You'll press enter. This will all be after you go through and hold down the reset button and apply power. Wait about 10 seconds and then you'll reset the reset button. You also want to have a, a physical connection between the computer and the router uh, via a LAN cable. So once all that's been done and then I open up Chrome or Internet Explorer, whatever browser you're using, 192.168.1.1, press enter. This is our screen that comes up here. Uh, don't let that scare you. Uh, the biggest thing is this button right here in the center. You want to press that button. All right, so once uh, you press that button, you'll get an open file, or you know, basically at this point, you're going to browse for your um, for your firmware that you're going to be using. Uh, and we've already downloaded Rooter. See right there. We want to use the 6.10 firmware. We extract it. We'll get this upgrade.bin file. You want to use that file. We'll select it and hit open. It'll give us uh, the little message right there. 192.168.1.1. You just want to press OK on that. And once you press OK, give it a second. The status bar will uh, pop up showing that, hey, the router is being flashed at this time. It'll pause there at the end for a little bit. And then it'll be redirected back to 192.168.1.1. Give it about three or four minutes uh, right here. And if you don't see anything, you can always close out this browser and reopen a browser. And uh, then you'll be able to uh, see exactly uh, or see the uh, graphical user interface for Rooter. Alright, right now it's uh, going through the reboot process on the router. And that may pause at the end too, it may or may not. It's been a while since I've done one of these. Alright, there we go. So, as you can see, it's gone through the reboot process. I'm just checking the lights on the router right now. I'm going to go back over here and attempt with the 192.168.1.1. give it a little bit as you can tell it's kind of thinking the router may still be going through the reboot process I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video for a second and then I'll restart recording once uh, the interface pops up all right, I had to re-input the 192.168.1.1, and right when I did, uh, this is what popped up here, which is the graphical user interface for uh, Rooter. Um, uh, username is going to be root, and password at this time, there is none. You'll have to configure it later. That's what's giving you this warning up here. Uh, we'll just go log in. <coughs> First thing I like to do is go change the password. And depending on the router, which I like to put it to the default if I'm doing this, it's admin. So all lowercase. 
obviously when you get it you're going to want to change that I also uh, change the SSH access and put it to LAN uh, it's more uh, of an advanced user function save and apply there we go we'll just kind of do a one over the world right so status and overview is kind of uh, the status of the router as you can see show memory if I had a modem in this router it would show and was connected to internet this is where you would see the IPv4 upstream uh, any active leases as you can see there's a computer there um, and also the uh, Wi-Fi radios as you can tell we only right now at this point have uh, <coughs> the AC uh, radio or sorry the N radio but if you're not getting anything above 300 megabits per second I wouldn't even worry about it and goes farther anyways uh, firewall Give it a second, it's pulling up the IP uh, tables for the firewall. There we go, that's all those. Uh, other information, uh, firmware update check, that does not work. That's kind of, uh, the guys have changed the way that they do this. Uh, it's on you to either compile new firmware or go back and check their website, you know, because they kind of do firmware updates sporadically. Um, there are ways, because this is just basically OpenWRT, for you to update the firmware, uh, but you could also break it at that point too, so I don't recommend it. Uh, load balancing would be in here if you had, uh, let's say, a second. Um, uh, a WAN connection like a hard line and you're using the LTE as a backup or a failover it can all be done in or seen here and done later in network uh, system information software uh, if I had internet connection to this this is where uh, you could come in here and update some of the packages uh, or see the packages uh, that are available for this uh, firmware uh, also the reboot I don't recommend using system stop I don't recommend using LED configuration because the lights are not quite uh, configured out on this test firmware if not you can always use the stock firmware uh, I just don't like it because uh, you can't see what's going on with the modem alright so here's the modem button connection profile this is where you're gonna set the APN right here for whatever uh, uh, service that you're using network status would be if I had a modem you would see uh, most of the information as long as it's programmed into the firmware a router for that modem uh, text messaging so you can send text messages via this uh, 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 account that you have if it's available uh, miscellaneous this is where you're going to send your AT commands so if you have certain AT commands that you need to send to the uh, modem, this is where you could do it, say for band locking or something like that. The debugging information is important because this is kind of the AT command execution line, and this is where you'll see uh, kind of a scrolling event to those AT commands. So um, also in here is where you would see uh, your modem where it's connected you know um, and then how it's connected whether it's connected to USB 3.0 or if it's connected to USB 2.0 um, connection log this is just hey has the modem you know been dropping and reconnecting dropping and reconnecting services kind of self-explanatory you can kind of go over those on your own so there's open VPN, network shares uh, network, here's your interface, wireless there's that radio right there and this is what you would change, edit uh, to change the SSID and password and encryption firewalls right here, load balancing uh, some people, sorry excuse me some people will stall you 
or install UPMP you know, just to kind of help their setup, you know, to create automatically create firewall rules. There's certain security issues with that. Uh, but if that's not a concern to you, I would go ahead and do it. It'll make your life a little bit easier. And that would be done up here in system and under software. Just type in after you do an update list in filter, you would type in UPMP and you want to select the Lucy one and then it will install all the other things for it. That's pretty much all I got on the how to flash uh, in a 1608 uh, with Router or any other firmware that you might have. Um, it's not openly supported yet on uh, OpenWRT as far as I know. This was direct from uh, the guys at uh, of Modems and Men. Uh, which is the Rooter project, which used to be Golden Orb, um, or is Golden Golden Orb? I'm not sure if it that's still what they're calling it or not. But the guy that does all that firmware, his screen name is Dairyman. Um, they have a forum through a Whirlpool. Highly recommend if you're having issues, go there and type in your issue. They'll be glad to help you. If you got any questions, you can always uh, send us a message via email or uh, through if you're on our eBay store uh, through uh, the messaging through that. All right, y'all have a good one.